is always a good choice. The default same page, just pre present the same page, uh, preferably with some sort of um, validation error messages to help the user to get over those uh, uh, validation failures. This is showing the procedure for adding any other type of button. So drag over a button control, specify the type as button. That is the default type when you drag over a button control. And then provide an appropriate um, label, um, in this case return to view. And then code the on click event uh, in the events view. Okay? And there are a number of simple actions uh, much like in form design where there are some pre-built simple actions that, that you can use. In XPage design, uh, there are some pre-built simple actions and this is where you might choose to open a page and specify the customer by name XPage. What this screen is showing us is the uh, visible property. The visible property is the opposite of your hide when property in form design. Uh, so uh, this can be um, hard-coded or computed, uh, much like your hide when formula. So you can compute the value of the submit button. Uh, the context here is your submit button would only be visible when the document is editable, and your return to view button would only be visible when it's not editable. So uh, the next screen here is showing us the formula for the visible property for that submit button you know, document one dot is editable. So let's take a look at adding some of those buttons, some of those navigation buttons to our X page. So I've returned to the design of the customer input X page. We have a submit button that was added when we added over all of those fields uh, from the data palette. And I can see that uh, the button type is submit. Now I'm going to add over a, another button. And this will be my cancel button. So I'll give it the name cancel or the label cancel. And its button type will be cancel. For your submit and your cancel type buttons, there's no need to code anything in the events view. But what you must do is in your X page properties, and I'm going to select my X page, and in my X page properties, I need to specify the next page to go to when we have a successful submission or a successful cancel, or when the cancel button is clicked. And I'm pointing to my customer by name X page. On the other hand, if the update fails, if there's some sort of a validation error, we'll go with the same X page. Now, very quickly, I am going to add some validation to a couple of these fields and the ones, or sorry, controls, and the ones that I'm going to focus on is, are the controls that are displayed in my view X page, in customer, city, contact, and phone. So for customer, on the validation tab, I'll specify it is a required field and put in the appropriate message, enter customer name, and then for my contact, I'm just going to specify required field, not put in a, an error message. Let's see what the default error message is. Same for city, make that required, and same for phone. And let's test out that. So I'll preview this X page. And I, I do see a submit and cancel button, and if I just put in um, some information here, like Fred, and maybe City of uh, Bedrock, and submit that. I see in my error messages control uh, a couple of messages. Validation error value is required. That's that default message for the phone field. And here's the one that I entered in, enter customer name. Okay, so some help for the user to complete that form so that it properly passes validation. Now let me check out the cancel. I'm just going to cancel what I've input here. So my cancel button, there's going to be no validation, there'll be no saving of the document. But there is a return to my customer by name X page. So that seems to be working. Now let me open up again an existing document. 
I can see my submit and cancel button, and now I'm going to work on that part of the design. You know, in this context, when my document is in read mode, really what I want to see here is maybe an edit and a return to view button. So let's work on that. So back in my input X page, I'm going to add a couple more button controls to support that navigation. This one I'm going to call edit. And the button type is button. And for button or other type buttons, I do need to code some sort of an event, what to happen when it's clicked. So on click, I'm going to use a pre-built simple action. There are a number of uh, pre-built simple actions in there available by category. So some of the document simple actions available are change edit mode, that's the one I want right now, but also things like create a response document or delete a document or delete the selected documents in a view control or modify a field. So here's the one that I want, but this should be familiar you know, to form design. So change document mode and change to edit mode and OK. I'm going to add one more button control to return to the view. And I kind of missed the location on where I wanted to add that, so let's try again. And of course I can use the outline view or even drop into the source to move around a controls location. So we're going to call this return to view. And again, the button type is button. And I do need to code the on click event. And this time I'm going to add a simple action to open a page. And the page that I want to open is my customer by name X page. Okay, so the last part of the, let's say, navigation problem is you know, the context to display these submit and cancel and edit buttons. So I want the submit and button submit and cancel when the document is editable. So I can go to the properties for my submit button and I can compute the visible property. And I can enter in the appropriate server-side JavaScript to um, check when the document is editable. Now, there are a number of libraries that are available. Uh, there are libraries like the Domino library. And these must look very familiar to you. Objects like uh, the notes database object, and there's a notes document object, and you know a notes session object, and, and so on, a notes ACL object. So uh, that's one of the libraries, and that should look familiar to many of you. There's also an add function library with um, uh, add functions like db column and db name and db title and so on. And there is also a global objects library. And one of the global objects is document one. And if I expand that global object, that name should look familiar to you. That is the name of my Domino document data source, document one. So that's how I programmatically access it. And I can see that we have the methods for a notes document object. Okay, like things like get item value and get value and uh, is this a response document? And is this document editable? In fact, that's the one that I want. So what I can do is I can simply double click on document one uh, to add that into my code and then hit dot. And here in my context window, I can choose um, which method I want. Or I can begin to type is editable and then select that. And that's all I need to do. Okay, so I want to show that submit button when the document is editable and I'm going to copy that into my clipboard because that is the same code that I want for my cancel button. So let me edit its visible property to the same. Now for my edit and return to view, I'm just going to negate that formula. Okay, so exclamation not document one is editable. And finally, for my return to view, same formula. 
Okay, so let's test this out. I'm going to um, save my X page design, preview it in a browser, and I see my submit and cancel button, but not my edit or return to view button. And if I hit cancel, I am here in my customer by name X page. I can open up an existing document. My document is in read mode, so I do see my edit and return to view buttons. Okay, so I can click that edit button to switch to edit mode. Let me open up another document, or I can click that return to view to execute the simple action to return to view. Okay, there is an activity that concludes uh, my part of the presentation. Uh, there is an activity that you can try later on. Uh, and let me preview it very quickly. Display a domino document on an X page. And in that activity, you're going to perform basically what I just showed you in the presentation. Okay. Define an X page to, to display uh, existing documents. Okay, so let me hand it back over to Howard, and he's going to continue with the next lesson. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, just give us a second to switch control over to my computer. Okay, so you should be seeing my, uh, my, my presentation. Paul, is that correct? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do is talk about some of the other controls to kind of finalize the one X page that Paul was working on, where we have the list box and the combo box, as well as get into some radio buttons and checkboxes. <clears throat> So first, let's talk a little more about the edit box control. Uh, so that was where the uh, users can type in information. Uh, so as uh, many of the X pages have a common set of properties on the first tab. And in this set of common properties, you can control the height and the width and the visible property that uh, Paul showed you. Uh, I think Lisa had a question in the, in the questions. Uh, some of you might have remembered, you know, the, the, all the issues of hide when, and that you really weren't hiding an individual element, you were hiding the entire line. Well, good news is that in X pages, you are controlling the visibility of just this one control. And that is computable as just about everything else in X pages. Uh, so that kind of makes our life a lot simpler as developers. Uh, there's also a password option that will hide the uh, input as the user types it. And you can set the maximum length and size. And there are different uh, display types. So these are going to translate into your different data types in the notes form. Uh, we have string, mass, number, and date and time. If you choose number, then you can format that uh, using decimal or currency or percent or supply your own currency symbol or, or create your own format. If you choose date and time, you can choose to use a date time picker and display just the date or just the time, as well as choose the style for the date and time. And then there's also something called mask, which is good for the credit card input or social security input, where you want to have the dashes show up where the user is typing but they, uh, that won't actually be saved in the data. There is a rich text control. We did have a couple questions on that in the question so far. Uh, and the rich text control would be bound to a rich text field in your domino form.